Malawi and its development partners are trying something new to help the country's most vulnerable women and girls get out of extreme poverty. Besides enhancing their socioeconomic status, a new three-year program will strengthen their resilience to crises, shocks, and disasters. Lamek Mazina reports from Blantyre. The UN Children Agency, UNICEF, and the Irish government say more than 20% of Malawi's 19.6 million people live in extreme poverty. They said Tuesday women had over 75% of all families living in poverty amid violence and harmful practices that undermine their participation in economic activities. The new gender empowerment and resilience program is expected to benefit more than 500,000 people in nine districts, giving them access to social services and cash transfers. The districts are Nzimba, Ncheu, Balaka, Chikwawa, Mulanje, Mwanza, Neno, Msanje and Zomba. Shadrach Omo is UNICEF representative in Malawi. He says experience has shown that parents and caregivers need to be supported with livelihoods and resources to support their children. That's why this program, which is supported um, by the Malawi government, European Union and UNICEF, is extremely important because through this program, we'll be working with the parents to support them to have the right livelihoods and incomes to support their children to grow to their full potential. About $26 million is being spent to tackle challenges that would help give Malawi women access to economic opportunities and essential social services. Besides cash transfers, the program will help promote access to social behavior change, nutrition, early childhood development, sexual reproductive health, and prevention of gender-based violence. Minister of Gender, Community Development, and Social Welfare Jean Sendezam says in a statement that Malawi has previously made progress in expanding social protections to reach more vulnerable people. However, she says significant gender gaps remain. NLS Pemba is the executive director for Chikondi Girls Project in southern Malawi. She welcomes the program but says similar interventions haven't yielded the results in the past because of a tendency of imposing solutions without even asking what people really want. Because we feel like sometimes a daughter just wants money. But well, there are a lot of issues that are happening. For example, when you talk about mental health issues, a girl child, maybe the parents is sick, both of them, or they don't have food at home, like we are facing like hunger in Malawi now. Pemba, whose project teaches girls how to make sanitary pads and other skills, says there is a need to encourage entrepreneurship skills in a girl child to help her find food for the whole family. Lamek Masina, VOA News, Blanta. Ongoing rainfall in two, on Tuesday led to the closure of some key roads in Tanzania's commercial capital, Dar es Salaam, with many people being forced to stay at home. For more on the situation, viewers Douglas Mpuga reached journalist Taji Luandi. The rains in Dar today were not as heavy as they were the day before. The thing with Dar right now is we have four districts. It could be raining very heavily in one, but it could be rather quiet in the other. But they've been devastating, uh, to say the least. The the road the day before yesterday, city center, different locales just outside the city were all inundated under water. There was flowing water. It wasn't as bad as we've seen in Dubai. But it was very unusual for many parts to have so much water streaming down other paved roads or unpaved roads. So you could say that yesterday, Da was pretty much underwater. Main areas where it's tricky, it's always tricky, like uh, an area called Yangwani, uh, that was closed off, impassable except for maybe motorcycle, border border we call them, riders who were who were also having a very difficult time traversing the, the bridge that um, links town with the uh, suburb of Dar Islam. And um, in the outskirts, it's also it w- it's also really bad. Uh, I had friends that I requested for videos, and so different parts of Dar Islam affected badly by rain for hours, probably some four hours, some six hours, and pretty much uh, almost 12 hours 
uh, constant rainfall. So that was a lot of water pouring down on Dar es Salaam in a short, you know, throughout the whole day yesterday. Uh, we understand that the government uh, authority had to close some roads in Dar es Salaam. How did that affect uh, movement and business? <laughs> well, Dar es Salaam is notorious for uh, long queues and uh, terrible traffic whenever rain falls, even if it's a little bit of rainfall for about an hour. So uh, it's quite chaotic. The city is very condensed. And so moving around with the car or with so many people uh, driving into town with their cars and also being a residential city as well, you can imagine um, if everybody's still using their cars, it's very chaotic. And I think a lot of people are going to get home very, very late. Uh, the, the, you know, the traffic queues in the evening begin to dissipate well after 9 or 10 p.m. At least five people have died while crossing the English Channel, according to French media, hours after the UK approved the migrant deportation bill. The Voix du Nord newspaper said the bodies were discovered at the Wimereau beach in northern France on Tuesday. The rescue operation is ongoing and helicopters and boats have been deployed, according to the regional newspaper. About 100 migrants have been rescued and placed aboard a French Navy ship. They will be taken to the port of Boronie, the paper said. This came only hours after British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's latest effort to send some migrants on a one-way ticket to Rwanda finally won approval from Parliament. Human rights groups have described the legislation as cruel. The UK government plans to deport some of those who enter the country illegally as a deterrent to migrants who risk their lives in Leaky. Boards in hopes that they will be able to claim asylum once they reach Britain. Benin is expected to receive transit duties and tax revenues per quantity of Nigerian oil that gushes out SMA Club Key. The projection comes as the platform where the pipeline which connects the Agadem oil fields lands last Sunday. Nigerian oil gushed out at Seme Klake in Benin, raising hopes for at least 2,000 jobs for Benin. Niger pumps around 20,000 BD oil of oil, most of it from China National Petroleum Corp. Projects in the Agadem lift basin in the country's southeast. According to a 2019 national petroleum plan, the conduct linking Korele in Niger to the port of Seme in Benin will transform Niger into a significant regional oil producer and exporter. Nigel is believed to be sitting on a billion barrels of crude reserves, according to the African Petroleum Producers Organization.